rangers out here for what gotta watch for forest fires. It's a good thing we all remembered our shovels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, hey Andy, you got a list from Kevin, didn't you, about who's bringing what? Yeah. I don't think shovel was on the list. I think the master planter here let us all down. Oh no. Hey, I'm gonna put this one right in Kevin's lap, I think. It's a good thing I, I didn't write a winter camping book and do winter camping <laughs> workshops and tell my, everybody that I'm a professional. It's a good thing I don't do that. Totally, yeah, yeah. So we're setting up the pyramid cell tent, an Esker 10 by 10. And uh, for this tent, you don't have to, but it's it's nice to uh, put a side pole out. So the side tie down goes up and then down. And uh, we're in a front country campsite in Killarney Provincial Park. You don't go off in the back of your campsite and cut green wood or even dead wood to be quite honest, to make a stake. So I brought them. Of course, I tease the guys. I say, hey guys, I brought some steak with us. With, with, and they're like, yay, yay. And ha, ha, ha. That's not really funny. <laughs> anyway, yeah, don't cut any green wood or dead wood in the back of your campsite and a front country site in a provincial park. Because if everybody did that, there'd be nothing left for the animals to live in. And we love the animals. They're cute and cuddly. Right. Once again, I'm talking so, while well, he's setting up the tent. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting set up. Sun, the sun hasn't set yet, Ooh. Tim. No, not. Don't let the sun go down on me. Don't let the sun, although I search myself, there's always someone else I see. So get to some loud fragment of your life. To wander free. Uh, Tim, how long are we out here for? Like losing everything is like the sun going down on Tim. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, that didn't take long at all. Well, it's it's not there yet, but it's uh, underway. Wow. In fact, if I if I lift it off the snow from there yeah. and leave it here, it'll probably get colder fast. Yeah. Check that out. Uh, what is that? Look at what is that? Did you spit on that? I did not. That's crazy. <laughs> Nature. <laughs> it's blows your mind. I don't get it. I'll take two, sir. Yep. Oh, I'll take two then. Right. Come on, man. Two, two ice cubes, right? <laughs> two rocks. Thank you. It's oh, good. my lord. I got to take my shot. Okay, for all these people that are like, I don't want to go near camp. You know, I'm going to go out in minus 35 and survive. Like, Okay, holy crap. It's yeah, really it cold outside, but it is so hot it in here. Up in here. Oh. Yes. Um, hallelujah. Oh, close, your, close your eyes, folks. They're going to get naked. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sorry. I shouldn't have That's a step too far. Now you have to edit that. Now you have to cut that. I'll just slow it down. What's wrong with my nipples? <laughs> yeah, this is why you should have a Patreon just for B roll. The Kevin Callan B roll Patreon. I'm telling no, you. No, no, I'm not going down that road. You guys do Kevin Callan Patreon and B roll. Uh... <laughs> We should sing a meatloaf song while we're serving this. 
I would do anything for love. But it won't do that. <laughs> Everybody wants to know, though, what was that? <laughs> Uh, fill in your own blame. <laughs> All right. Okay, dear. All right. I got ketchup, but I don't think we need ketchup with that. No. That looks like it's ready to roll. Are you okay? <laughs> I, I need to tuck my pants in my socks. And I'm doing it very... Delicately? Very. There we go. I'm good. You're good? All right. <laughs> well, you got to grab in the bucket. It's very serious. Life's a song, man. You've got to keep singing for as long as you can. You all right? Oh, oh my foot. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I'm halfway there. There we go. I'm in. You good? Oh, the, the tough part's over. <laughs> Too sweet. Too sweet. Night, hey, everybody. Night one. All right. Adventure. I'm too hot. It is too hot. I, I'm right beside the stove. You're not. I, I, I want to switch positions next time. Oh. Ooh. Yay. Rolling. Well, Kevin always does something that's off the cuff. I left my food outside last night, which, it, well, it's fine. There was no room in here. Um, but it was cold last night, so everything was frozen. So I had to dethaw the bacon. And I did bring eggs. But we did sleep with the eggs last night. Yeah, we brought the eggs in. We're going on the Granite Ridge Trail for a nice stroll. A wintry day. Yeah. Cold and crisp but sunny. This trail is right across from the gatehouse, Clarny Park, so it's really easy to access. It's kind of different looking in winter time than it is in the summer. Sure, it's nice to be out. Wow! Nice! That'd be Georgian Bay, wouldn't it? It is. <laughs> cool. Beautiful view. So we got a view of Georgian Bay, Phil Better Island, on this end. And if we go over the little hump over there, we can see the south of the Clash Range of Killarney. Here we go, Andy. Lakosh Mountain Range. So yeah, this is a the divide. So you've got the granite of the Canadian Shield of the Laurentian Mountains. Uh, stop here. And then the Lacloche Mountains of Quartzite over there. You got the South Range, the North Range, and uh, th that is older than this mountain. It's kind of cool. But because of glaciation, it's just got scoured. I'm just full of knowledge. It kind of oozes out of you. <laughs> Well, that's one of many trails you can take from the campground at Clarney Provincial Park. Grand Ridge Trail is right across from the gatehouse. Other ones to try. We got the Cranberry Bog, but a nicer one from there in the wintertime is you take the uh, east side of the Cloche hiking trail. It goes all the way around the park, but you just take it out to the first ridge and you can look out to George Lake. That's a nice view. The other one is on the 
west side of the Lacloche Trail. You can follow that. Um, I like going all the way to Lumpson Lake and then going up the ridge at Lumpson Lake to see Georgian Bay and area. Uh, what else you got? Oh, you got the crack, which people do in the wintertime. Uh, there's a parking lot there for it. You go up and it's a good half day, day hike. Um, and then you got, uh, well, you got Silver Peak, but I, that, you wouldn't be able to do that in a day in the wintertime. Not that I know. And uh, you also got an extensive cross country ski circuit around the park which is quite nice, it's all set for you. Yeah, lots of things to do just from, from the campground and the comfort of your hot tent. <laughs> it's a beautiful spot. This is George Lake. We're at the campground, George Lake Campground. And just a little bit of a hike from uh, our campsite. You got that view. It's amazing, the Lacloche Mountains. Yeah, I've always loved Clarny. I, I came here back in high school, I think grade 11. Uh, my, my friend's father said there was good blueberries here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when we saw the Lacloche Mountains, we're like, who cares about the blueberries? It has blue, great blueberries, but uh, yeah, the Lacloche Mountains are amazing. And I've been coming back since, especially in the wintertime. A uh, few reasons why I really like Clarny in the wintertime. It's not as busy at all. I mean, I, not to say I don't like people, but it, 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 it doesn't have the crowds. Silence, silence of winter, silence of winter in Killarney. Just love it. Lots of things to do um, from the main campground, to be quite honest. You can set up a nice hot tent or, or a four season tent or whatever, or a yurt or a cabin. But you can do a whole bunch of hikes, skiing, um, and even go to town and get fish and chips, right? And uh, we saw Mike Ranta's uh, big paddle there today. That was a, that was kind of cool. Hey Andy, hey. I thought we'd want to check out Mike Ranta's uh, biggest paddle in the world, or biggest paddle in Canada, or biggest right? paddle. He carved it. Is that right? Yeah. Andy, Yo. it's not a real paddle. It's a bench shaft. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Just teasing, Mike. Great work. Way to go. If you don't know the, the guy that made this, uh, he's paddled across Canada in one season twice. Actually, I think he did it four times, or he did two other big trips after that. And does a lot for charities and stuff like that. So, good guy. Yeah. Awesome. I just want to ask Andy, are the drinks being served? Always. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, we're having snacks. Some frozen cheese, bell apart and crumblies. There you go. Some candied fish. Is it brown? Crackers. Where'd that brown spoon go? Oh, right here. Ah. Crackers and nice. pepperoni sticks. Uh, what's going on, Tim? Tim, something's going on. Well, the decision has been made to. Andy's on dinner duty, and the decision has been made to put dinner which is frozen in these containers into the billy yeah not straight on the full high heat just off to the side so slowly we're not in a hurry yeah we're not uh but we want to get going because you know what time do we eat last night i think it was about midnight two. i thought it was about two two a.m yeah, yeah. About two, yeah. it was pretty late waiting and waiting and waiting yeah so we're gonna get a jump start on it today that's a lot of stewing that's what i said does it need a little water? It's okay as it is. I have water. I can throw some in there. Yeah, let's throw want. it in just to get it started at least. Okay. Ooh, look at that. How was the day? It was lovely. Yeah? Yes. I, um, I woke up and I was alive. After clinging to you for dear life all night. <laughs> It wasn't cold at all last night. And then... Um, I, th I think it was cold, but Tim did such a great job keeping wood in the stove all night that it didn't feel cold in here overnight. It's all about Tim. He's it, so full of himself. <laughs> Tim's great. <laughs> I wish I was Tim. It's a tough life out here. It's horrible. 
Don't do it, folks. You'll end up like me. <laughs> this is like this is like one of our best survival YouTube <laughs> videos of, of all time. Yeah. Oh, my back. <laughs> I better sit on my chair <laughs> and take it easy. Oh, I hear the bubbling. Hear that? Yes. Put the stove in turbo mode. <laughs> Mr. Pipes are really rosy back here. Oh, a little bit too much turbo. Turn that down a bit. Uh, Tim, while I have the camera on, can you explain to everybody out there how to control the stove? Uh, it's all about, well, a couple things. So I have the damper set, not at 12 o'clock, at about 10 o'clock. Uh, that just helps kind of keep the heat in the stove once you get it going. But the way you control like how hot or how hard it's burning is by how much oxygen hits it from the front. So I had the door open. So if you want to hit it hard, you better like really going open the door. But you gotta watch it because I actually had the pipe going a bit red. I couldn't see it because the pot was in the way, but the pipe turns a bit red. So that's too much because the pipes are going red, so I can't have it. But for instance, say this was like lower, I wanted to get it, it's cold in here, I want to get it going, I would open the door. Keep an eye out for smoke, it's not coming out the front. Early on, you can, uh, when the fire's getting going, you can have smoke coming out the door, you keep an eye on that. But this has been going for a long time, so no worries, you can't open the door and all the uh, because of the heat, it's all being sucked back into the stove, so we're good. But, like I say, the pipe can get a bit too red. So, I'm going to close the door, and then this guy in front here controls how much air gets in by how open it is. So I'm going to keep this, I want to keep it nice and hot, because we got this going, I'm going to toast up the buns. So I'm keeping that fully open, and again, keeping an eye, make sure none of the pipes or the stove is turning red, and it's not, so we're good. And if we listen, I don't know if you can hear it. You think that Michael picked that up? Yeah? We can hear the stew bubbling away. Actually, here we can show them. I'm gonna get a shot of this. Yeah. So we have some nice bubbling. Oh, a bit of red pipe. So we're still a bit too hot. I'm gonna damp that down a bit. So we're still a bit too warm. We'll go with that. And that's, uh, that's how you control the stove. Looks done to me. Mm -hmm. Those buns too, eh? Those yeah. are perfectly toasted. Okay. My understanding, if I have this correct, is that ketchup came after catsup. And catsup, I think it was a British thing, and then ketchup, I don't know. People just Wikipedia, catsup versus ketchup. They're not quite the same thing. Okay, I'm getting the pouring of the soup now. It's too steamy, I can't see. Captain, I've lost control. Yep, yeah, okay, our second night. Now actually it's colder tonight, even though. It does though feel a bit colder. It does, actually. Yeah. Uh, the weather station, last time I checked, didn't say that, but it's colder. Not in here. But outside. Yeah, you can't go outside with your hands bare for quite a while. What the did you, what the heck's going on? What are you doing? Hmm? Are you alright? I'm fucking up my my uh, feathers. I'm down. I'm getting down. He's a professional. Okay, Mr. Foley, is there a face there? Like, I just see your nose nostril, that's it. Are you all right? I'm good, man. I am roasty yeah? toasty. Okay. Good night, Mr. Baxter. Good night, Mr. Foley. Good night, John boy. Okay. The adventure continues. Well, top of the morning to you. Started snow this morning. A little tickle on the nose. Good night. Yeah. Good sleep. You can just let's on the stove if you want. I think it's thick enough. 
Okay, I'll put it on the yeah. stove. Okay, we're off for another day hike. We're leaving our site and we're going down to the second beach and heading up along the La Clasha trail that goes east. And it's pretty steep, so see how we're doing. We're bringing snowshoes this time. Right. And we got this warm tent to come back to. Well, we're on top of the one ridge. <laughs> it took us a while to get there. <laughs> uh, yeah, nobody walks on this trail much in the winter, as we found out. So the ridge trail was better, right? Yeah. Yeah. And if we went west on the, the cloche, it's flatter. That's more doable than this. Okay. But it's a nice view. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm That was some cool hills. Yeah. Views. So that's a vegetarian chili? Yeah, so okay. I put in, because I mean it's winter, I probably could have brought hamburger, but uh, the veggie stuff I think has a better shelf life than obviously you know bringing meat. So I brought that, and veggies to look after our nutrition and digestive needs. You know we're far away from the outhouse, right? Exactly. Yeah, what, what spices are you putting in there? Uh, that was cumin. I had uh, smoked paprika. Mm. That was this one. All right, I got a key on your spice rack. Yeah, I got this uh, <laughs> back in 1992. You can believe that. And I, I don't think they make them anymore. It's great. Each little thing screws in. It's awesome. Uh, but yeah, I've had this since 1992. What's that? That's 30 years, eh? They don't make stuff like that anymore. 
Have those spices been in there since I No, they've not. I've okay. updated the spices. No, but it's a great... Uh, get those spice rack comes in handy. Because it's nothing like home cooking when you're hot hunting, right Kevin? That's my next book. Tim's cooking to me. I'll sell thousands. Uh, Tim? Yes. What are you doing? Well, it's a surprise. Well, it's not now. I'm filming it. It's, uh, well, it's like uh, fry bread. <gasps> I'm going to put some cheese in it. It's in the hole. You go all out. Hey, man, uh, eating when you're out, that's, that's kind of one of the highlights. I mean, standing on a ridge, taking in a vista, that's a highlight, right? Mm -hmm. Get some exercise, that's a highlight. And then, like, the whole culinary thing, that, that is a highlight. Andy, you with me? It's part of the joy. This is it, man. So, Andy, like, what do you think about that idea? Do a cookbook and just call it... Tim's... T Tim's cooking tonight? Yeah, yeah, Tim's cooking tonight, yeah. I think that that's fantastic. Yeah. You know, just... Uh, Take some good notes while uh, Tim's cooking his meals, and maybe not just tonight because he does great breakfast and you know lunches too. So you know something like hurry up, Tim's cooking, you know, or we're gonna eat like kings, Tim's cooking. Oh, Tim, that looks scrumptious. I don't know. Well, Andy, dinner's on. Woo! Weird again! Look at that! It's, it's our last night! It's actually the warmest night we've had though. It is good. Yeah, yeah it was good. Yeah, yeah. Once again, uh, Mr. Foley over there has gone to bed before us. He's a sleepaholic. <laughs> you know we're aging though when the conversation around the campfire and with bourbon tonight is how to keep your skin soft <laughs> yeah oh dear. okay good night good night good night john boring kisses <laughs> oh i was just clinging on to you for dear life trying to suck every ounce of warmth out <laughs> i think that's the only way i made it through yeah i hope you're okay you kept smacking me. Get off! Get off! No, I, I want to live! <laughs> I did hear uh, some noises through the night. <gasps> yeah. Oh, what a, kind of noises? A tinkle tinkle into a container. Oh, Jesus. A magical pee jar. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's my friend at certain points in the evening. What's for breakfast, Tim? Um, I don't know what I call it. Kind of a fruit compote, let's call it. Yeah, yeah. With uh, kind of like a breakfast bannock, let's call it. Mm -hmm. Do a slow mo with the steam.
black Eyes on the freeway Bonnie and Clyde A classic cliche We're on the run This is what we waited for Take my hand, we'll make it somehow We can't miss out Awesome trip, winter camping at Killarney Provincial Park. <laughs> I love this place. Uh oh, we had an incident. Calvin Rustrum's Paradise Below Zero. Yes, could you read a bit of it before bed? Okay. Yeah. Chapter two. That's a good chapter. I love that chapter. Escape complex. Mm -hmm. How does one go about proving that life below zero can be not only healthful, but viable, animated, enjoyable, and inestimably fruitful? The most vital and convincing proof I know of took place in the wilderness of Upper Lake Winnipeg in Manitoba, Canada, a good many years ago. If I may be allowed to use a single example here through... An entire chapter, perhaps the reader will find it significant, possibly interesting, even, I hope, convincing. A middle-aged former Chicago businessman and his 19-year-old daughter on a late fall boat excursion on Lake Winnipeg, followed by a two-weeks stay at, in a cabin, had missed the last boat back for the city of Winnipeg. Panic seized the pair. The possibility of getting caught in the freeze-up of Lake Winnipeg's shore ice excluded the trip south by canoe and paddle. It was the era before radio communications or planes. Also, the outboard motor idea at that time was just beginning to germinate in the head of Ole Evenrude, its inventor. I was laying over in the summer cabin of a trapper friend at the upper end of the lake waiting for freeze up uh, waiting for the freeze up swing over from canoe to dog sled travel. The only existing immediate alternative in view for the father and daughter was to wait for the freeze up and travel south with me by dog sled. The father was a bit paunchy, the daughter young and attractive, but with only a little more athletic prowess to travel 300 miles on snow snowshoes than the father. The travel outlook for both was a bit grim. My harness dogs were calculated to haul a sled loaded with light, portable winter camp equipment, provisions, and dog food, not passengers. Would I have a potential coronary on my hands somewhere along the 300 mile wild shore with little chance of hauling a 200 pound man or a girl or both. The Indians who might possibly have been hired to haul the pair in dog sled carrioles had departed to interior trap lines for the winter. My time of departure south by dog sled was contingent upon the degree of temperature drop varying in uncertainty from week to week. With his industrial influence and apparent affluence, the father of the stranded pair, I presumed, was more accustomed to giving orders than taking them. Nevertheless, I made it realistically clear that if we were to travel together on this trip, it would be necessary that he diet and seek some conditioning in the meantime. The reducing diet seemed no problem at the time, since he could do it chiefly on a protein diet of meat. 
my own diet, as at the beginning of every winter, had for a month been primarily meat for the purpose of raising my, meta my, my metabolism to cope with cold weather. Moose, woodland caribou, and bear meat here at this wilderness camp at that time were far more plentiful than conventional store trade foods. With some affairs of my own to attend to inland from Lake Winnipeg toward Hudson's Bay, I did not see the stranded tourists during the ensuing two weeks. They had, however, been well accustomed or well accommodated in a log cabin. Both father and daughter, I learned, had made a desperate effort during my absence to abide by the rather strict rules of exercise and diet I had laid down. They were seriously convinced that, quote, escape to the outside, end quote, depended on these instructions. And so, perhaps it did, but it occurred to me that, above all, a wintering in this northern region might have been what both of them needed physically and mentally more than escape to the city. You got to read that book and that chapter because that's amazing. So they go across Lake Winnipeg to get out. That's fantastic. All right. He's going to continue reading because that's what we do for entertainment in the hot tent in Killarney for winter camping. Too bad, Netflix. He's got you beat. That's all I'm saying. Read on, Mr. Baxter. Where's the remote? 